These are just a few examples of what you can do in workaround number 3. In my first workaround, you get the Saber effect instantly in Premiere Pro with a single effect. In my second workaround, we're gonna make a detour to After Effects. And in my third workaround, you'll need nothing else than Premiere Pro and a little tiny file. It's really fun to play with the parameters all inside Premiere Pro. All results are based on Saber's core preset and they almost look identical. Each workaround has advantages and downsides, but you can tweak all of them inside Premiere Pro. Let's start with workaround number one. I just created a new sequence with a size of 1920 by 1080 pixels and I already put a text layer inside it. I set the font to Titanium Web Black, which is a free Google font. First, uncheck the Fill checkbox and check the Stroke checkbox instead. Let's set the stroke width to 3. Then look for the Ecto effect and apply it to the text layer, which gives you a saber looking effect instantly. Oops, haven't found the Ecto effect. Well, that's the downside of this workaround. You have to buy the Universe subscription from Red Giant. There is an affordable student version, but still. Anyways, what is cool about this plugin is that you can stay in Premiere Pro and have access to a bunch of presets. Let's apply the laser width preset. Set distortion source to 20, low intensity to 1.30, increase the distortion to 50, adjust the inner color, the outer color, and you get an effect similar to the core preset from the original Saber plugin. But because we don't want to spend any money for plugins, let's move on to the next workaround. In this workaround number two, we're gonna try to kinda implement the original Saber plugin into Premiere Pro and adopt as many from its parameters as possible. It requires After Effects and the great Saber plugin installed. You can find the link in the description below. Let's duplicate the text clip, remove the Ecto effect and toggle off the video channel below. Right click on the duplicated layer and select replace with After Effects composition, which opens up After Effects. Name it something like Saber preset and save the After Effects project. Double click on the pre-composition to reveal the text layer. Create a new solid and apply the Saber plugin to it. In the effects panel, select any preset, like the core preset. Then open up Customize Core, set Core Type to Text Layer and select the text layer we imported from Premiere Pro. If you want, you can fiddle around with the parameters to get your desired look. If the Essential Graphics panel is not open yet, you can find it in Windows and check Essential Graphics. In this drop-down list, select any composition. In my case, it's the pre-composition Glow FX and name it like Saber Template. Then click on the Solo Supported Properties button, which shows you all the parameters you're allowed to use in Premiere Pro. I tried it before and I can tell you that not every parameter works properly in Premiere Pro. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna grab some of the parameters, like Preset, and drag it into the Essential Graphics window. Let's do the same with some other attributes, like Glow Intensity, Glow Bias, and Offset and Distortion Amount. Let's not forget the source text from the text layer. In Edit Properties, you can enable Custom Font Selection and Font Size Adjustment. Then click on Export Motion Graphics Template and choose your destination, like the Local Templates folder. If these boxes are checked and you hit OK, a warning pops up that reminds you that for this template you need After Effects installed. Hit OK again. Switch back to Premiere Pro and delete the After Effects layer, because we don't need it anymore. Instead, go to the Essential Graphics panel and under Browse and Local Templates folder checked, you can find our Saber template, which you can drag into the timeline. Let's it play and Premiere Pro plays it back almost in real time. Select the template which leads you to the edit section to modify the parameters. Glow intensity works. Glow bias works. And offset works. And distortion amount works as well. We can also edit the text. But what if we try to change the preset? It does not work unfortunately. 
I don't know why, but as I said before, not every parameter works correctly. The other downside is that you can't animate essential graphics parameters. There is no stopwatch to set any keyframe, so the end offset parameter may be useless for you. A solution would be to create the animation and After Effects before you export the motion graphics template, but you cannot modify the animation in Premiere Pro afterwards. The workaround number 3 is based on my After Effects tutorial where I recreated the Saber plugin with built-in effects. These are just a few examples of what you can do in workaround number 3. I created them with a motion graphics template that I already prepared for you and which you can download from the link in the description below, of course for free. Or leave me a dollar if you want to support me. Let's turn off this video channel, go to Browse in the Essential Graphics panel, click on the Install Motion Graphics Template icon and open the downloaded file which will be added into the Local Templates folder. Drag it into your timeline and hit Play. Looks almost like the core preset from the original Saber plugin. Select the template to edit the parameters. I set up four groups of parameters for a clear structure. I think they're all self-explanatory. You can play around with the parameters and see what happens. But let me rush through the parameters so you get an idea which part of the effect you're tweaking with the sliders. When you move all the fractal sliders to the minimum, fractal and noise type to the basic settings, you'll get a simple glow. Not animated, nothing special. In the glow settings, you can increase the gamma correction to make the glow brighter. With this slider, you can expand the outer glow. When we increase the inner glow, which is responsible for the glow close to the stroke, we'll get something similar to Saber's default preset. And from here, you have a good starting point to create your own glow style from scratch. When you increase the fractal contrast and scale up the fractal, the fractal structure starts to take shape. With the fractal type and the noise type, you set the tone for the glow effect. With the inner fractal amount and size, you distort the inner glow. Same for the outer glow, with these outer fractal sliders. With the turbulence amount and size, you make the strokes a bit jittery. Of course, you can fine-tune the glow effect by adjusting the stroke width and the core color. Because the core color is like a highlight, I would recommend using lighter tones. And if you want, you can increase the core blur to better blend the strokes with a glow. Finally, let's decrease the outer glow and gamma correction. Let's hit play. Maybe it's a bit choppy at first, but as soon as it got cached, it plays back in real time, even at full resolution. I also implemented a special feature that the original Saber plugin does not have. Because we do not have the option to reset the default settings, let's override the template with a new one. I already imported a footage of a dancing woman on green screen. I'm gonna drag and drop it onto the new item icon, which creates a new sequence. Let's apply an alt track here to the footage. Key the color with the eyedropper, look for the find edges effect, apply it to the clip, look for the invert channel effect and drop it onto the clip as well. Now I'm gonna return to the original sequence, go to essential graphics, set text opacity to zero, open up the footage group, set footage opacity to 100 and drag the footage sequence into the insert HD footage window. Look at this, you can use any footage for this effect. Just as a reminder, the original Saber plugin can only use text layers and masks. Because real-time playback is a bit choppy and blurry, let's render it. Then hit play and we can see all the details. In theory, this should work with the Ecto effect from my first workaround as well. So let's copy the Ecto effect, put the footage sequence into the timeline, paste the effect and tweak the parameters a bit. Well, I think my version looks a bit better and 
it doesn't cost you a thing. I'm talking about workarounds, not solutions, because in Premiere Pro, you really don't get the full potential of the original Sabre plugin. But I guess when you need the Sabre effect inside Premiere Pro, it's not because you want to create complex motion designs or heavy VFX stuff. After Effects is just simply better with this. I suppose you want it for simple text effects. Anyways, I hope there is at least one of the workarounds you might find useful. If so, please like my video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell notification. I'm also open for suggestions on how to improve my template. Just leave me a comment below. See you next time.